Well, hello, friends interested in ADHD science. Russ Parkley, here again with another commentary about the causes of ADHD. Uh, and again, this time, I'm going to address another component of Dr. Matei's theory about ADHD arising in part from bad parenting. Now, let's take a quick look at Dr. Matei's theory. I'm going to oversimplify his book, Scattered Minds, where he lays out these theories, or th this idea, that is. And also, he talks about these in his more recent interviews with the Joe Rogan Experience and on Diary of a CEO on those podcasts. But no matter, we can simplify Dr. Matei's theory as follows. ADHD, as he claims, arises from two components. The first is a child who is exquisitely hypersensitive, a child who feels things deeply, whose radar is up and sensing the environment around them even more than that of typical children. Now, as I explained in my last video, that is wrong. There is no evidence to show that kind of hypersensitivity to the environment. But in this video, we're going to talk about the second component of Dr. Matei's idea, and that is stressed parents and their parenting styles. Dr. Matei argues that parental stress, conflicted families, can lead to parents who are poorly attuned to their child's emotional needs and therefore lead to poor attachment with the child as well. And he argues that it is this important component that is interacting with the child's hypersensitivity to this distressing environment that leads to ADHD. Now, Dr. Matei argues that ADHD is not genetic. We'll deal with that in just a moment. I dealt with it a year ago in my other presentation on Dr. Matei's ideas. Instead, Dr. Matei argues that the hypersensitivity of the child does have a genetic predisposition to it, but not the ADHD. Okay, so we're going to take a look here at this component of distressed parents and their poor parenting as a contributor to ADHD. Now, if this is true, we should see substantial evidence in the research that distressed parenting or stressful parents are just as much a part of causing ADHD as child hypersensitivity and its genetic predisposition. Well, let's go into the literature and take a look because what people don't realize is these ideas are testable. We can actually take Dr. Matei at his word and go look for evidence of this and not cherry pick the evidence as he sometimes does in scattered minds that is using only the evidence that seems to support his ideas, but all of the evidence. Now I've done that previously around the concept of hypersensitivity in the child, but let's take a look at the role of stressful parenting and just the role of bad parenting generally as to whether it is causing ADHD. So let me get out of my PowerPoint and let's go look at the research literature. So if we ask Google about the genetic contribution of ADHD, we get the following based on their AI overview. According to the twin studies, the genetic contribution to ADHD is considered to be very high the heritability estimates ranging between 70 and 80 percent, meaning that a large portion, the majority of the variation in the ADHD trait in the human population is accounted for by genetic differences. Now, this is important for Dr. Matei's theory in several ways. First of all, it disproves his claim that ADHD is not genetic. Now, he wants to kick that can down the road and say, oh, but the hypersensitivity is. Okay, well, then you have to prove that because we can already prove that the trait of ADHD doesn't need some other trait for us to understand that it alone 
is strikingly heritable, that is, is genetically influenced, compared to other traits like, for instance, IQ, personality. Those are nowhere near as influenced by genetics as is ADHD. The second re reason that this is important is that twin studies can be used to decouple components of a trait into those that are due to genetic variation. That's what heritability means. But there are two other components that we can talk about here. One is the extent to which the rearing or shared environment is contributing to the disorder. We call that shared environment. And that is where parenting would have its effects. The second component is non-shared environment. Things that twins or siblings growing up together don't share. Likely things that happen outside the home or harmful events that befall one child over another, such as a head injury or an infection or lead poisoning. So there are a variety of factors that influence ADHD that are part of the non-shared environment, but not in the shared environment. So what are the twin studies telling us? That most of the variation in ADHD is due to genetic variation. There's very little left to be explained here about what's causing ADHD. But what these twin studies also show is that the environmental component is only 20%, and most of that is non-shared environment. Don't believe me? Let's have a look here at a review of the literature published by the great scientist. Let's get out of this. We don't want that. The great scientist, who is Steve Ferrone. And Dr. Ferrone and Henrik Larsen have reviewed the literature on twin studies. Now, this is about six years ago. There have been many more twin studies since then. But they looked at seven, excuse me, 37 twin studies and found that the average extent to which genetics explains the trait is 74%. They also report that there was a very low, if not non-significant, contribution of the shared within family environment. And they found that there was a small contribution of non-shared environment, unique events that befall one child and not another. Now, just as an aside, that 15 to 20 percent that was not shared environmental influence, part of that is the unreliability of the measures used in the study. So it's below that percentage. No matter, the twin studies show us that within family environments that are shared by siblings and twins is not a factor in ADHD. Now, we can reverse this question and let's ask Google and its artificial intelligence, does parenting cause ADHD? As you see here, no, parenting does not cause ADHD. ADHD is a neurodevelopmental disorder primarily caused by genetics. But there are other environmental factors. What could those be? Lead poisoning, premature birth, head injury. Your mother had an infection with you and not with the other kids in the family. It could be out-of-home experiences as well. But parenting would fall in the shared environment. And as the Google response shows here, it is not making much, if any, contribution to explaining ADHD. Now, let's go and take a look at some of the evidence. Here is one of the largest twin studies ever done. This is, again, by Henrik Larsen and colleagues. It is a study published in Psychological Medicine, and it is a study, see here, 59,000 twins, both identical and fraternal. Indeed, the uh, population sample from the tw Swedish Twin Registry is used for this study. What did these authors find? See these results here? The best fitting model revealed a high heritability of ADHD. See that number? 88% of the variation in the trait in this huge study was explained by genetics. Notice what it says next. 
shared environmental effects, on the other hand, were non-significant and of minimal importance. So there you have it, folks. Both reviews of the literature, as well as very large twin studies, tell us that parenting is not a factor that is influential in the cause of ADHD. Now, don't get me wrong. Parenting matters. We know that there are shared environmental contributions, including parenting, to disorders that are comorbid with ADHD, such as oppositional defiant disorder and conduct disorder, and even to a lesser extent, possibly to depression and anxiety. Though they have genetic components to them, they are nowhere near as genetically determined or influenced as is ADHD. So let's understand parenting matters, but not in the cause of ADHD. So I hope you can see why we can discount Dr. Matei's ideas about ADHD arising from an interaction of parenting with hypersensitivity. ADHD individuals are not hypersensitive, and parenting does not play an important role in causing ADHD. Now, I know what you're going to say. If you look at families that have ADHD, right, you will see that their parenting is different from that of typical families. There might be more directives. There might be more expressed emotion. There might be less rewards to the child. There might be more uh, punitive interactions with the child or corrective interactions with the child. There certainly is more effort to guide and direct the child's behavior. But research over the last 50 years, including many of my own studies, show that this is a reaction to trying to raise a dysregulated, unself-regulated ADHD child. And where the child's ADHD may not explain all of this difference in parenting, guess what else does? The parent's ADHD as well. So even where we see signs of different, if not disrupted, parenting in these families, careful analysis shows that it's a result primarily of the child's ADHD and to some extent the parent's ADHD where that might be present. Other studies have also shown that when we put ADHD children on and off medication and their parents don't know when the medication is being given, parenting behavior begins to approach that of typical parents when the children are medicated as compared to when they're not. So there's lots of evidence here that bears on the issue that Dr. Matei is raising, that parenting has a major contribution to causing ADHD. No, it doesn't. All right, thanks for joining me for this video, everybody. Stay tuned for other videos on this channel later in the week. I deeply appreciate your watching the channel and your respect for the science of ADHD, and also for recommending this channel to others who may need this information. Thanks again, everybody. Live well, be well. Take care. Bye now.